Today is a press conference that we are attending for the Mississippi Municipal League for the Smoke Free Cities Awards. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Cooper. I'm with the American Lung Association. I am a part of the coalition called Smoke Free Mississippi. It's made of many nonprofit um, health advocacy groups, the American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network, the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, the Partnership for a Healthy Mississippi, Mississippi Public Health um, Association, I'm missing several other groups, but we are a group of over 100 and something organizations statewide that work to reduce exposure to secondhand smoke. This is probably the fifth or sixth year that we've been here at the Mississippi Municipal League. We recognize the need to be uh, on the ground where you guys uh, congregate and have your annual conference, and we have been just truly blessed to interact with you guys for the past six years. Um, Mississippi has won now for almost the fifth year in a row, first place in the number of smoke-free ordinances that have been passed in a calendar year. Uh, with comprehensive smoke-free workplace policies. That includes restaurants, workplaces, bars, and the like. And so Mississippi is number one in something. Good. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> Our mission is truly to protect everyone from breathing in secondhand smoke. In 2006, the Surgeon General re released a report saying there's no safe level of exposure to secondhand smoke. And the truly only proven scientific way to protect folks is to have a policy in place where people can go eat, work, and play in a smoke-free environment. And that is our whole goal, not only for us as patrons, but for the workers as well. This is also a workplace issue. So we want to make sure that we are continuing to strive and reach all the municipalities in Mississippi and eventually we will get a statewide smoke-free law through the legislature eventually. Um, that's something we've been working on since 2003, and we've been unsuccessful, uh, but we will not give up and we'll continue going city by city because we know local leads the way for the states to pass policies. So with that said, I'll turn it over to one of our true long-term champions. Um, you all know Mayor Johnson, the city of Hernando Mayor. Um, he has been a great advocate for public health, for smoke-free, and at this time I'll introduce him. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I'm going to say something that you're going to have to listen to very closely because you're going to wonder why I'm saying it at this podium. But listen very closely to what I'm saying. As mayors and elected officials, it's not our job to tell people not to smoke. That may be up to the health department to educate them. That's not our job. If people want to go smoke at their house or wherever they're going to smoke. That's kind of their personal decision, right? But what is our job? One of our biggest charges as elected officials is to protect the public health. And secondhand smoke is one of the biggest issues, biggest health hazards we need to help protect our citizens from. So when people are saying you're outlawing smoking, that's not what we're doing. We're outlawing secondhand smoke. It has been proven to kill people, kill. Over 500 people a year in Mississippi die from secondhand smoke. That means they were killed by someone smoking around them. That's how serious it is. Why are we not taking this seriously as a state? We've tackled DUIs, which we should, because people are getting killed by drunk drivers. Now let's tackle a statewide smoking, secondhand smoke issue that is killing over 500 people a year in our little state. We shouldn't stand for that. So that's what y'all are doing right now while we're waiting on the legislature. Y'all are doing this individually as cities, which is the right thing to do. Um, I know when I started doing it in Hernando, I didn't know all these professionals existed to help us. We just decided we were going to do it. And we had three out of five votes. And y'all can imagine how contentious that board meeting was. And it seemed like the entire world came down on us. Well, it was probably only 21% of the city that came down on us, because that's about what the numbers are, right? Most people in your towns don't smoke. They don't want to be around smoke. And it's not just that it's uncomfortable for them. It is hurting their health, and they know this. I had no idea how bad it was until after we passed our law, and parents just kept coming up to me and saying, hey, my kids have asthma. Now we can go out to eat. We couldn't go out to eat before. That's just kind of crazy. I mean, we make all these allowances, as we should. We put in handicap ramps and all these rails and stuff for people in wheelchairs that have trouble getting around, which we should do. There are way more people with respiratory ailments and illnesses than there are people in wheelchairs. Why aren't we taking care of that? 
So I'm trying to give you all some talking points because I remember how I felt when the whole town was coming down on me and I was trying to pass that law. It dies away very quickly. It really does. You get a couple of months of everybody grumbling and griping and then everybody just realizes that's the way it is and they start understanding that when they go outside to smoke their cigarette that they are helping protect the other people around them. It's, it's a courtesy thing. It's a courtesy that will save someone's life. So um, I'm very proud of the new cities that have done this. You are taking a stand to protect the people in your city. That is a big deal. I think I've been in office 10 years now and passing a comprehensive smoke-free ordinance is still the most important thing I've ever done in my life, I think, because we have saved lives in Hernando. Think about that. How, how often can you save people's lives? In this position, you can do it by adopting comprehensive smoke-free ordinances. And uh, I had some trouble getting mine passed. I'm going to introduce you all to our president. Is he here? Mayor Altenshaw. And he's going to tell you how he just did it somehow. He's smarter than I was. Uh, Mayor Altenshaw has been smoke-free for a while in the city of Wesson. He is a, an also listen to him because he is an expert in his field. He is also a nurse, a nurse and a mayor. If you don't trust him, you just don't get it. So having said all that, Mayor Altenshaw, come up and tell us your story. Appreciate it. Yeah, I guess it does give me kind of a, a unique viewpoint because I get to see it from both the policy side and the health side. Um, I started in, in 95, uh, starting in emergency medicine, worked as a paramedic for a while, and then got his RN in an emergency room. And I've been doing that now for about 10 years. And it really is, when you see people come in that have different kind of uh, respiratory diseases, the COPD types, your emphysema, bronchitis, and so forth, and it's a direct result from the smoking. And then you see some come in that have some of the same similar disease process going on, and they say, well, I've never smoked but I lived with so-and-so that did, or I've worked in an area that did, and now they're experiencing these same problems that the people that actively smoked experienced. And, you know, if you've ever been around someone that's dying of some type of respiratory issue, uh, you'll realize it's not nice. And um, I don't think there's hardly any of them I've talked to that says, you know, it wasn't worth it. So just kind of take that thought process. We're not just the ones that directly, but the ones that indirectly that have to go through those same issues. That's what we're trying to help with. If you choose to, that's your decision, but it should not affect others. Uh, the policy side, what he was talking about, is uh, we took a stance and uh, talked to some of the aldermen one-on-one. -on -one. We didn't have the unusual quorum like some people get in trouble for doing. But we just brought it up in a meeting and did it. We didn't have a discussion about it. We didn't go out asking people what they thought about it. We just brought it up one night, said, you know, hey, here's a comprehensive smoke-free ordinance, gonna have a motion that we pass it. So I had a motion, had a second, all in favor, passed unanimously, went on. We had very, 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 very little kickback from that. Most people were like, okay, we understand. You know, keep it out of the restaurants, keep it out of the public places, keep it to where it's not affecting other people. So for the ones of you that uh, have, have either not done it or are thinking about it or know communities that are, uh, that would be my suggestion to you. you, know, you once you start going out and saying, you know, what do you think about this, you're going to get that minority that's so vocal that they're going to try and run a few people down and stop it, but just do it, do what's right, and then let the chips fall where they may. I said, if I ever lose a vote for doing what's right, that's one I didn't need anyway. So uh, I encourage you to do that, not only for the safety of your citizens and visitors, but also the safety of your own family as they go out and visit these restaurants and places as well. Uh, with that said, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Rhonda Lampkin with uh, Smoke Free Mississippi. Good afternoon. Today, uh, Mississippi uh, is receiving national recognition for, from uh, Americans for Non-Smokers' Rights for taking local action to provide its citizens protection against the harmful hazards of secondhand smoke. Um, we are receiving the first place Smoke Free Air Challenge Award for passing the most local smoke free laws in 2014. And yes, you can applaud. <laughs> As Jennifer stated earlier, 
Uh, this is the fifth time for Mississippi to be presented with a Smoke Free Air Challenge Award. And each time we breathe a little easier knowing that we are that much closer to providing um, our families and our workers in Mississippi protection from exposure to secondhand smoke in the workplace and in all public places. So we're really happy about that. And with the 14 um, municipalities adopting strong smoke-free air laws, we now have a total of 101 municipalities with smoke-free laws. And of course, that provides about 30% of our um, state's population um, protection by law from secondhand smoke. So we're really proud about that. And as Jennifer stated, uh, we are facing a stalemate um, at the state level. Of course, the Mississippi legislature has not addressed this issue in nine years. Uh, the 2006 law that was passed only provides minimal protection. It provides protection for um, government workers, um, you know, protection from uh, secondhand smoke work, secondhand smoke in the workplace. Again, that's only for government workers. So uh, we're all seeking a healthier Mississippi, and we need a state solution to this problem. But today, we're not here to talk about that. We want to applaud those municipalities that took that step to adopt a strong, comprehensive smoke-free air. Um, law that protects all of its citizens and all of um, the workers, their workers in um, all public places, in places where people um, dine, in places where people recreate, so that they are not exposed again to um, secondhand smoke. So without further ado, I would like to call Mr. Roy Hart. Uh, Roy is the director of the Mississippi State Department of Health Office of Tobacco Control and present him with the Smoke Free Air Challenge Award that we received from the Americans for Non-Smokers Rights. Thank you, Ronnie. You can just hold it right there and show it. You can model it for everybody. Thank you. Um, I think pretty much everyone that's come before me speaking has said all the words that need to be say, said about how important this is for the state of Mississippi. Um, tobacco use is still the leading cause of illness and death in the United States, and especially in Mississippi, where our, our resident suffers from so many chronic disease-related issues. And tobacco use and exposure to secondhand smoke just worsens so many of those chronic disease and health conditions. So. We want to, from the Department of Health, we want to really thank you all for taking a leadership position and, and, and really affecting individuals' lives who, who, who live in your, in your municipalities and cities and towns across the state. Um, without your help and support as partners in this effort, we would never be able to accomplish what we've accomplished in the state of Mississippi. Like Rhonda said, we've been recognized as a state for five years for as, as a recipient of a national award um, where, we, where we've passed more municipal comprehensive smoke-free ordinances than any other state in the United States. Um, that's, that's an achievement for the state of Mississippi, but it's a testament to how you all feel about your residents and the quality of life that you want your residents to have in the state of Mississippi. Um, like Rhonda said, we have work to do at the policy level, um, uh, at, at the state level, but that can come later. We want you all to continue to be advocates and, and talk about how this has affected and changed the, your, your city. Um, the, 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 the recognition for you all, we're going to continue to help recognize you all as we move forward. Every year we hope to come down here and recognize 15 or 20 more cities. And we're going to invite you back to this room. We have to get a banquet hall um, uh, so because every city has done this. So. Um, uh, once again, thank you to ANR for recognizing us. Thank you, Rhonda, for representing ANR, and we really appreciate y'all's um, continuing support and effort and public health courage that it takes to do this in some cases. Um, so I think, Buddy, you're the next speaker. So um, Buddy Dauber with Mississippi Public Health Association is going to come up, and we're going to present individual awards to the cities who um, passed uh, smoke-free air ordinances in recognition for their hard work. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Roy. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Buddy Doggerl. I am the uh, proud executive director of the Mississippi Public Health Association. 
You may or may not know about the association, but it's a, a nonprofit organization made up of over 700 public health professionals across the state, uh, many of whom are in this room. Um, and, and we work uh, every day to advocate and educate about issues of per personal and public health in the state of Mississippi. Today, uh, I'm proud to be here representing the entire public health community uh, as we recognize the 18 communities who adopted comprehensive smoke-free ordinances in the past year. Thank you for protecting the public's health. I'd like to talk in a little bigger picture. I, Roy said it, all of the other speakers have talked about the issues with secondhand smoke. Let me tell you a little bit about some of the bigger issues in health and public health that we're working on. Um, we, a number of partner groups that are here today, as well as many others, are working to do a, a state health assessment uh, through the state health department. I've been uh, privileged to be a part of that, and it's it's we spent several, several days with over 140 different uh, public health and health professionals across the state really trying to assess where we are in health in Mississippi. I am tired of Mississippi being last or next to last in many of the health indicators that are going on, and we intend to work with others to do something about that. We came up with a number of issues that, that are working on, some of which you may not even believe have anything to do with health, but they're, they're a big issue the social determinants of health. We have to do something about poverty in this state. We have to do something about only 25% 20, uh, uh, of our adults, 25 and over, not getting a high school education. We have to have an educated population to get those folks out of poverty if we're gonna do something about health. Chronic illness is rampant in Mississippi. Obesity is rampant. And we're trying to do some things around those issues. We have got to, be, quit being complacent about being last and develop a culture of health in this state. It's something we can do and we must do if we're going to make some improvements economically and otherwise. We need a common health agenda. We talked here about the need for uh, the state level uh, smoke free air uh, act that we, we're all trying to push for and do. With the help of all of these communities in this room and the 101 smoke-free communities, if we all get a com behind a common health agenda, we can push that through and make that happen. We hope to serve as a catalyst to do that. So plans are being addressed to kind of come up with real, real life things that we can do to make improvements. These are big problems and big issues. Let me cite one study just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. If we were to invest $10 per person per year in proven community-based programs that help people increase physical activity, eat better, and avoid smoking, we can save the country more than $16 billion annually within five years. That's a return of $5.60 for every dollar we spend. So y'all are on the front lines with those things. I would just encourage you to keep pushing for a healthy, healthier community in the, as well as the steps you've already taken. We can do something about health in Mississippi and the communities here today are helping lead the way. So what we'd like to do now is use this venue and this opportunity to recognize those communities and have them come up and receive their award. We are very proud to uh, co-sponsor this event today and uh, look forward to continuing to work with you and your communities and hope that you support public health in your communities and, and continue to lead the way. So, without further ado, I will call these in alphabetical order and please come up and receive your, your award. Brandon, Mississippi. Brooksville, Mississippi. Beulah, Mississippi. Clarksdale, Mississippi. How about Crawford, Mississippi? Cortland, Mississippi. Asola, 
and the two gentlemen that had the shortest drive here from Iuka, Mississippi. How about Nettleton, Mississippi? Picayune, Mississippi. I know they're here. I'll have to uh, say I was speaking about that assessment a while ago and one of the things that came up in part of that work group that I was in was how we could really use the tobacco uh, issue, the tobacco work as, as, a, as a method to look at other chronic illness things. If you think about all the work that's been done in tobacco control, we have had some money over a number of years. We've had a very consistent education and message targeting youth a lot as well. And we also have local coalitions that have worked with state partners. And that is extremely important. And I think that's exactly what that young lady was saying. But where the rubber meets the road is down there where y'all are and in the cities and towns and in counties in the state, if we're gonna make a difference. So that tobacco issue came up as a model that we might could use to do with some of the chronic illness programs, the obesity issues and other things that are problematic in the state. So excuse me for jumping in there, but the young lady is absolutely correct. I think I'm at Pittsburgh. And I know these folks are here, Poplarville. Senatobia, Mississippi. Poseidon, Mississippi. South Haven, Mississippi. Tutwiler. And last but certainly not least, Walnut Grove, Mississippi. How about a big hand for everybody, all 18 of these communities? Again, we thank each of you for the work you do in your communities. I, I know there are a number of partner groups that do a lot of work around the issue of tobacco control. I would encourage you to go back and look at and continue your work to make your communities, your towns, a healthier Mississippi. We can do this. We can make ourselves healthier and better and make the, the state better. I'm tired of being last. We can do better. So on behalf of the Public Health Association and our other partner groups that are here, we thank you for coming out today. We have some refreshments, some coffee and refreshments. So we'd love for you to stick around for a few minutes and visit and a big thank you to each of the communities represented here today. Thank you for coming. City Council's Board of Aldermen and Mayors will um, look at a model ordinance that will protect individuals from secondhand smoke in workplaces, restaurants, and bars. They go through the process of adopting this ordinance with public comment and hearings as well as a vote to enact this ordinance and protect their patrons, workers, and residents from secondhand smoke in their cities. What does the research show in regards to the dangers of secondhand smoke? Exposure to secondhand smoke over a few minutes to several years will show damage to the respiratory system, eventually uh, cause disease and death like cancer as well as heart disease. So there are multiple um, causes um, or, or disease states that happen after exposure to secondhand smoke and there are several illnesses like respiratory illnesses, upper respiratory infections, ear infections, sudden infant death syndrome in babies, as well as worsening asthma attacks among our kids and adults. We're the Mississippi Public Health Association. We've been in existence since 1937. We are a group of public health professionals across the state uh, that advocate and educate around per public health issues as well as personal health issues in the state. Your reaction to the trend with more cities in Mississippi passing smoke-free ordinances? Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. The 18 uh, communities we recognize today brings the total up to 101 cities and communities, uh, towns across Mississippi that have adopted a smoke-free uh, uh, ordinance for their communities. It, it's a tribute to what they're doing to protect the public's health. In the past, 
say five years, we've passed about 70 out of the 100 tobacco-free ordinances that we've um, that municipalities have passed. Um, we're seeing a lot of good momentum. Cities, we've saw, seen a lot of interest here at the the conference with cities that did not yet have an ordinance. Um, we hope to work with those cities and and have um, even a, a larger room full of, of cities to to receive awards next year as well. What is the uh, trend with young people and tobacco? Well, unfortunately, there's a, um, a, a trend of increasing use of, of spit tobacco products in young people. Um, generally, tobacco use and smoking, smoking in general, is, is kind of flatlined. Um, more students are not necessarily smoking across all grade levels, but there is an increased use of, of spit tobacco, and there's an upsettingly increased use of electronic smoking devices like e-cigarettes and vaping devices. Those are really on the rise with young people, and as a state, we've got to take a, a make a decision to do something about that. So. What is the role of the tobacco companies when it comes to uh, influencing young people? Well, unfortunately, with regard to um, electronic devices, um, there's no they have no limitation on how they can advertise those devices. Um, with regard to smoking or cigarettes and, and other tobacco products, they're limited with the way they can advertise and, and attract youth to the products um, based on the master settlement agreement that was signed in 1997. Um, so they can't really directly promote tobacco products, but they can promote electronic products directly to youth or in a way that's very attractive to youth. And is that being done now? Yes, we, we see them patterning their, their behavior with regard to um, electronic devices like they did in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and early 80s with regard to making them more attractive, having stars glamorize it, seeing the devices in movies and TV shows, and just making them seem like they're really, you know, lack of a better word, cool to use. They can go to smokefreems.org, smokefreems.org.